My name is Mark Wheeler and I've been fascinated by the psychological aesthetics of photography since I was about 10 or 11 years old, although obviously I didn't call it then. I've always been really interested in the way when people look at photographs, they don't see the form of the photograph, they just see the content. So they don't say, here is a photograph of my aunt, they say, this is my aunt. So that talismanic quality of photographs has been something I've been conscious of for a very long time. And I began working with therapeutic photography with young people who were living in the therapeutic community. And I was really interested by the strength of responses that people had to these images. And I thought somebody else must have thought about this before and trained them as an art therapist. And since then I've worked for 30 years in the National Health Service in the United Kingdom, working with children and families and working with the enduring effects of trauma. And I've used therapeutic photography, art therapy and systemic family therapy in those interventions. However, something shifted a couple of years ago when the COVID-19 pandemic swept across the world. And for a period of time, we weren't allowed to meet with our patients and our clients face to face, and nor was it possible at the time to see people by video conferencing. So we had to innovate and develop new ideas. And I felt one of the most useful tools we had was the fact that most young people and most families have mobile phones with cameras in them. And with a colleague, I developed an idea of behavioural activation therapeutic photography walks and ideas where using homework set between sessions of therapy would enable the people that we worked with to build on the ideas of the work with graded exposure to going outside, graded exposure to going into public places because people were becoming increasingly anxious because of the risks of infection and because the fewer times people actually go out and meet other people, the more anxious they become about it. So we measured these interventions using exactly the same set of measurements we would use for the United Kingdom Improving Access to Psychological Therapies program using outcome rating scales and session rating scales. And we discovered that going for a walk and making images with our patients had the same outcome results as cognitive behavioural therapy and art psychotherapy for people who were presenting with the symptoms of anxiety. And we also noticed that the people who participated in this programme would use their telephones to take pictures and would share those pictures back with us um, via social uh, media or connections. Um, and that this interaction reinforced and strengthened their ability to overcome any anxiety they were feeling. We also discovered that this had an effect on raising people's mood and reducing low mood. And when we were now allowed to meet um, patients and clients again, actually they wanted to continue to do the behavioural activation therapeutic photography walks. So we, dis we discovered that interventions we'd been using without thinking before as part of what we were doing actually in and of themselves had very useful beneficial effects. One of the other things that came out of the therapeutic photography walks, which is very relevant to this weekend programme, is that we would sometimes walk around the cemetery, the graveyard in the local town, and my patients would point out the graves of members of their relatives and talk about um, the things they knew about these relatives, some of whom had died before my patients were born. And then they would have conversations with these relatives in which they would share things about their current anxieties in life and wonder about what their relatives might have said as useful advice for them had their relatives still been alive.